Um, thanks for coming to the session. Um, demonstration on uh, core stack. Um, it's orchestration simplified. Um, before getting into the demo, uh, let me just introduce myself. Uh, I'm Venkatesh Perumal, uh, the VP Business Development with Core Stack. Um, and here's my colleague, um, Ratna Sabavadi. Call him Saba, who is. Um, yeah, I'm Saba. I'm a CTO with Core Stack. Thanks, Saba. Um, yeah. So I'll just give you a quick preview of what we um, are going through today. Um, right? So the very first one would be what is Core Stack is all about, right? What is Core Stack? And then um, what have we done differently in terms of uh, Core Stack? So what is the incremental invention, innovation? Thirdly, we will go through how Core Stack applies to all the IT stacks. How, how does it orchestrate across the layers of IT? Um, fourth would be our features. Uh, there are some cool features in the product, which I'll um, go through um, in the product itself. And then fifth, we'll try to uh, show you a couple of use cases, right? What, what can be solved as part of this particular product? And finally, six, we'll, I'll go, go through the product itself with one use case, and you'll be able to literally visualize as to how easily you can orchestrate um, using Core Stack. Well, um, Core Stack, it's a converged orchestration engine. Uh, it's a template-driven orchestration engine to configure, provision, deploy, and also it makes your IT operations task very, very simple. It spreads across your heterogeneous layer. When I say heterogeneous, it is, you know, um, an enterprise or a service provider would probably have a bare metal uh, as a service. He could probably have a virtualization environment, a cloud environment. That's precisely what I'm talking about, heterogeneous. Um, and it also has the capability to work along with various other tools that are part of um, the landscape. Well, what is so new about Core Stack, right? So uh, it has mastered the template for simplicity. It basically means, today, if you look at OpenStack, right, you have got Heat. Heat is a template-based orchestration, right? We've got Mistral, which is also template. We've got uh, Murano, which is also template. In AWS, we have CFN. We have Tosca. So there are so many standard templates out there in the, uh, in the cloud area, right? So each has got its own specific DSL format. The beauty of Core is it can understand any template format, and it can execute. That's the best part. So even at the later point, if you have any new template format coming in, coming in you should be able to use Core Stack and Orchestrate. Secondly, extending capabilities for uh, templatization. That basically, what basically uh, it, it means is, today Heat has got certain capabilities. We have extended the capabilities of Heat to manage multiple or orchestrate multiple clouds. Similarly, Mistral, we have extended its capability to talk to Puppet, talk to Chef, and we can extend it as uh, uh, as the product matures. Integrating relevant tools for the best business value. So in any la IT landscape, you'll have own, your own set of tools. We are not there to replace any tools. We are trying to coexist with them. We'll integrate it and use it for the best value. That's what it's all about. So when I was talking about various layers, so an enterprise or a service provider will eventually have a stack, the first stack will be your infrastructure stack, right? So you have a compute, there's a bare metal, or the bare metal you have virtualization layer, and then you have various cloud that an enterprise can adopt, right? From a private cloud or from a uh, hybrid cloud strategy perspective. Then comes your uh, configuration tools. It could be Puppet, Chef, Ansible, or SaltStack. Um, on top of all these layers is what core stack sits upon, right? So what it does is it protects you from any IT changes that may happen in future. So tomorrow, there's a new technology coming in. If your IT landscape is changing, Core Stack will make sure there's a seamless integration. The, f the Core Stack engine remains the same. We'll build in the plugins and ensure that there's no impact. And similarly, um, today, if you're using specific configuration tool in, in your environment, we are not there to replace it, but we are there to utilize the best out of that particular configuration tool. Features. Um, there are a couple of very good features. Well, I'll go through um, the product itself. As I was talking about, it's template driven. It's very, very simple. It's just a set of instruction or input parameters that an IT ops guy or an admin guy has to input. 
and your template starts running and it can provision, it can configure, do what it was supposed to do. There's another feature called template builder. The more and more DSL standards are coming in um, or DSL formats are coming in, we, what we have done is we've made it very easy for um, the uh, IT team to basically do a drag and drop of um, resource elements and then create the build, uh, uh, template just by a click. Thirdly, configuring workflow engine, right? In any, so here what we have done is we have tried to integrate with the business project, uh, process management of your uh, enterprise or organization. So if you have a process, how that can be represented in a workflow, and then when you kick off the workflow, it starts executing the template based on any dependencies. Thirdly, triggers. Trigger, uh, it's so at once you build a template, the template can also be triggered based on any event, right? So there are monitoring logs are coming in, and you know that you, know, you have to auto scale. So a template, you can, you can already define a template for auto scaling, and the moment you get, read the log and you say, yes, it has reached 80% of utilization, you can trigger the template automatically. Scheduling, this is used, predominantly this is used at the, at the IT ops level, right? So you have to take a regular backup, regular snapshots. Uh, and I want to run a specific template on a specific day um, uh, or a recurring uh, format, right? So this particular um, feature enables you to schedule a specific template and it can execute, right? So if you want to take a snapshot on the first day of, uh, first day of every month, you can just create a template, schedule it, and it takes care of it. Service catalog, what it means, right? So you're creating templates after templates after templates. Essentially what you're building, you're actually building a catalog for addressing a specific use cases and which could be reused again and again by, by your team. That's, that's the catalog and it's a repository basically. Bi-directional third party integration. We are actually flexible enough to integrate with whatever IT tools that are there in the enterprise or service provider and we integrate that with our tool and you're able to have a single pane of glass in terms of, you know, uh, orchestrating across the layers. Role-based access control. This is very, uh, very much required when you are uh, dealing with provisioning and configuration. So you have to segregate users who can only provision or who can only create a template or who can only delete a template, right? So there's, there's also a lot of control built into that. Multi-tenancy. So this comes into the picture when you have, you know, we have a lot of departments in an enterprise. From a service provider's perspective, they have a lot of customers. So this is a multi-tenant application wherein you can onboard a customer, you can create him as a tenant, and then you can uh, basically take care of the customer using that own entry. Um, notification alert, this, uh, this is based on um, reading the logs of monitoring tools that are being set up. So let me just quickly um, go through uh, the features. Oh, yeah. So uh, I was talking about uh, the use case. There are plenty of use cases. Today what I'll uh, walk through is the deployment of a distributed application. Um, usually what happens in a distri distributed application, right? So let's take a two-tier application. It is, you need an app server, you need a DB server, right? So you want to provision two instances, you want to install an application, and then you have to configure an application. On top of that, if you want to monitor those application, you can insert that script as well into one template with one click, you are able to deploy the application. That's exactly what it is. And uh, from a use case perspective, um, it is not just uh, limited to um, de deploying distributed application, but also you, know, you can provision bare metal, you can configure your devices, which, is, which are basically switches and routers of any kind. Uh, you can install OpenStack itself with a single template. Right, so there are numerous use cases. So let me just quickly um, get onto the product itself and show you how it is done. Um, I'll walk through the features and then I'll run a template. You can see how easy it is. So this is, uh, this is the dashboard, right, Core Stack dashboard. Um, and on the right top um, corner, uh, basically uh, there's an admin um, features. Uh, if you look at service accounts, those are, if you click that, yeah, that actually provides you the kind of service that you have in your infrastructure, right? You, ha you could have a cloud, you could have a private cloud, you can also have a virtualized, in, uh, virtualized environment, and you could have a couple of bare metals. So you can create all those things as a service account. 
So in this case, you know, in cloud, you can add OpenStack as if you have OpenStack as a cloud, you can add OpenStack. If you have a hybrid cloud strategy and you're using AWS, you can add AWS as well. So basically, you're trying to orchestrate across various platforms by adding them as a service accounts. Once it is added, so next one is resource elements. Resource elements is the place where you go and register your device, right? It could be a switch, it could be a router. Now, even for uh, resources, you are, uh, Costax uh, gives you a flexibility of creating one template to provision, to configure the device. Then comes um, the user, yeah, templates. So this is what we were talking about, right? So templates, what are these templates? So this particular list basically gives you a repository of all the templates that you build. And essentially, well, it becomes a guide for you, and then you start using it. You can share it, and each and every template is categorized as it could be a global template, it could be a project, or it could be a private template. Right? Uh, and these templates are cla uh, classified. You can classify those templates as, OK, this particular template is used for provisioning alone. This is for configuration. This is for backup or catalog builder. Right? So when I was saying that, we also coexist with other configuration tools. That is done through the scripts. So if, you are, if your organization uses Chef or Puppet, we basically import the, the scripts of Chef, and you can uh, you, uh, use those script or provision those script directly uh, out of core stack, or you can also uh, attach to a template. I'll show you um, uh, when we run the um, template of a distributed application. Um, schedules. This is the part where I was saying that you can create a template for taking a volume backup every Monday, um, <coughs> and this is how it looks like, right? So you know there's a calendar. The user knows that, yes, I have, I have a schedule which is scheduled to run on uh, you know, uh, this Friday, so let me go have a look into it. And you get a notification. When you try to schedule it, you get a notification that your schedule is kicked off, it has run, it has run successfully. Jobs. Um, so when you execute a template, it basically submits as a job. And once it submits as a job, you can actually look at uh, it at a runtime. On the right side, it gives you the log of what are the steps that it is executing at each level. At the end, at the uh, output, it basically gives you a link and other information for you to access um, the output. The other cool feature is uh, the template builder that I was talking about, right? So here, let's take an example that you want to provision instance. What, do you, what would you require? You would require a network, and you would also require a compute, right? So once we go to network, in network, you require private network. So you drag and drop. You require a subnet. You drop. You require port uh, interface. And port, you dra uh, drop it or uh, drag. You go to compute next, right? So in compute, what do you require? You require a key pair. You require security group. And then you say, create the VM. So this actually becomes the moment you hit the build, which is on the top. Uh, it creates the template. So really, you really do not need to code a DSL. There's no template. You, know, you don't need to know any format. This particular feature takes care of it. It is not only limited to that. The moment uh, in the compute, uh, if you want to deploy, so for your use cases, provision an instance and deploy an application, there's a feature called deployment. You just take the application and drag and drop. Once it's provisioned, it goes and deploys the application itself. Right? So, you, so it's, it's a classic case of wherein it exists with you have a, a DSL, and also a script is embedded into a single template. Workflow. This particular feature suits very well for service provider as well as for enterprise. Um, a classic example would be you now a department wants a private cloud, OpenStack private cloud to be installed. What would typically the process would be in an organization, right? So you will have a process called, OK, you are, I want to go and gather requirements. So I'll go and gather requirements as to you know, how many servers I require, um, what are the switches that I require. You, get, you basically get those specifications. You, you click the process. It initiates it. And each of the process where it says, go ahead and install, perform network configuration, all those tasks uh, at the back are actually associated with the template. So the template executes. At the end, once the process finishes, your OpenStack is ready. Right? And at any point in time, when you go and look at the execution, it basically tells you where the process is stuck. Right? I have made the request. It's been I've been waiting for two days. I really don't know. Uh, this particular tool will tell you yes, okay. It's actually waiting at the install level. 
Now, um, let's, uh, let me show you how um, we can um, deploy a distributed two-tier application and how it runs. Right, so um, taking an example of Sugar CRM, which is a two-tier application, we require a web, ser a web server and a DB server. So the first task would be to launch a DB server. Um, second would be it will launch a web server. Then you will define the security groups. It will install the applications, and then you will configure it. Right. So this particular template takes care of the entire steps one by one. Even execution has been made very, very simple. It is all parameter driven. You say, what is the cloud service on which I need to run? I say, HP Cloud. I want to run it in a US East region. Um, you, you just enter the parameters. Um, and then once you hit run, you'll see that it'll get submitted as a job. There you go. So, and and uh, at every um, you know minute or two, if you want to go and check, it basically scrolls down, and you will see that it has run. Um, let me show you how you know it looks at uh, from Horizon perspective, right? So you want to see how what it is doing, what the job is doing. So if you go to the uh, US East network topology. So the network is create, network is there. The VM has been created, and I'm sure the next steps will be following. Right, the sugar CRM is there. The MySQL server has been created, and you can easily monitor it. Right. So on the right side, you're 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 now seeing that what what in which um, step it is currently running. Um, if you go up. At the end, once the job completes, you get a link which says, you know, go ahead, ac access the application through a link, and you know that the application has been installed successfully. OK. All right. Um, you have any questions? Yes. Uh, I'm not able to hear you. <laughs> We, uh, we monitor both, actually. We can monitor just the infrastructure layer, the availability of the VM, or we can monitor the application availability, or we can also monitor the different parameters associated with the VM, like monitoring the CPU, or like you know, monitoring the MySQL services, all that. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, if you want to know more about um, the product um, and also the demo, we are um, at the booth T19. We'll be happy to um, walk you through in detail. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.